Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Jay Little. I'm going to tell you how to write your disassembler in 15 minutes, but the too long didn't read part is don't do it. There's better ones out there that you could just use instead. Uh, why you might want to listen to me for a couple of minutes, uh, I'm a security engineer at Trail of Bits. I'm like a Ida Pro janitor. Instead of cleaning up messes with a mop, I do it with local types. And uh, I used to be a CTF kind of has been guy, and I'm helping run Ghost in the Shell code. If you haven't checked it out, it's pretty cool. We have an online MMO game. It's over in the Jefferson West Room. Uh, so some people don't know what disassemblers are. Uh, if you don't, if you can't do it in your head, you need a program to do it for you. Uh, I do know a couple guys who can just like look at x86 bytes and like have conversations with their four other friends that can do it, but I, I can't do that, so I need a program. Uh, so uh, what, what makes a good disassembler? Uh, if there's a command line tool where you can just be like, here's some bytes, give me, give me some uh, mnemonics for what they are. If you can write a script to do it, uh, there's all sorts of like malware out there that has like ROP gadgets and you have to figure out exactly what they're, they're doing, so it's kind of nice to be able to pr programmatically do that. Uh, sometimes you need to disassemble whole files, sometimes a few bytes. Uh, they shouldn't crash, they should do the instructions that they say they should do. And uh, if, if you're going to like release a tool and don't want it to be all like open source, it shouldn't be GPL. Uh, so there's three categories of disassemblers. Uh, that I've made. I, I kind of want to label these like hypervisors, like type 1, type 2. Uh, but uh, there's like GUI tools, like IDA, uh, architecture specific tools, and multi architecture tools that kind of try to do everything. Uh, for GUI tools, uh, hopefully you guys have seen a few of these before. Uh, Visual Studio has a debugger for when your program crashes. Uh, IDA Pro is kind of the industry standard. Uh, for reverse engineering, like it does hundreds of architectures. Uh, GDB kind of sucks and uh, tries to do things, uh, but it's disassembler is okay. Uh, Hopper, it's a, that's a new kind of disassembler. It's like 30 times cheaper than IDA. And uh, there's all a debug for Windows people. Uh, for something that I, I, I hadn't seen before uh, until recently is the, is ODA. I guess it's kind of like IDA, but like, uh, for the web. It's the online disassembler. It's pretty cool. This is the only picture I have in this presentation. Uh, and it, uh, you can give it bytes. It's all just on the website. Really easy to use. The, uh, it does a ridiculous amount of architectures. So no matter what kind of thing you have, if you have something x86, some like MIPS thing, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, so now I want to talk about some ARM disassemblers. ARM's kind of the new cool thing since there's like cell phones nowadays. And uh, go over the first one. Uh, this one's called DARM. Uh, it's BSD license. You can go to DARM.RE, which is an awesome domain name, and uh, check, uh, check it out. It's pretty good. They're about to add uh, more ARM v7 kind of support, uh, which is kind of important for ARM, because there's so many different devices over such a long time. The instruction formats are very different. It's kind of a mess. Uh, there's no documentation, but it's really easy to use. Uh, and there's actually like tests behind it, so you kind of know like if it's going to work right on your bytes. Uh, the next one is uh, ARMStorm. This is written by the same guy as D that wrote DI Storm. Die Storm, I don't know how to say it. Uh, it's GPL v3, uh, but it's kind of like a pet project of his, kind of like a toy thing. Uh, on the website, it's like, it's pure source code. I'm like, what's pure source code? And it means it doesn't have a make file. <laughs> and so that's how you compile it with the Quang line there. Uh, it's not that bad, but uh, it, uh, it compiled on my computer. Uh, <laughs> So the good thing is it's free, like it exists, it can do thumb code. Uh, bad, it doesn't have any tests, it's a toy project, it hasn't been updated in a while. Uh, it does no harm at all, <laughs> and uh, it doesn't do thumb v2. So if you have like a, like a Android or an iPhone binary you're trying to figure out, it, uh, it won't do it, because it's not 2006. Uh, <laughs> So it gets worse from here. Uh, this is some other random project I found on GitHub. It's called Disarm, which is kind of like scary. 
uh, GPL v3, which is also scary, or v2, which is scary, but not as scary as v3. Uh, and it does ARMv4 and v5. So for very, very old things you're looking at, like, I don't know, probably some SCADA system or something, uh, it could probably disassemble it. But this is a project that has some Ruby bindings, so that's why it's here. Uh, next up is uh, x86 disassemblers. So for like Macs or whatever people use uh, for their computers nowadays. A uh, little bit of a precursor for uh, what's good about an x86 disassembler is Intel syntax, because at and syntax is kind of for hippies. Uh, so all, all of these do Intel syntax in some, some form. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is B-Engine. It's uh, LGPL3, which is better than GPL. Uh, and it can do uh, C and C++ and Python, so you can programmatically call it. Uh, it's got a lot of documentation. Their wiki is top notch. Uh, there's not like built in tests for it, but uh, it, it's kind of okay because uh, there, there is documentation and you can kind of tell quickly that it's going to work. Uh, for support, uh, I was going to put a link to their, their message board, but uh, I guess it got compromised uh, and it's not there anymore. I, I didn't check the Google cache and like the Wayback Machine to see how far back it went, but I think it's been a while. Uh, next one is DieStorm. This is like one of the most popular x86 disassemblers. It does 32-bit and 64-bit, uh, a whole bunch of different uh, CPU extensions. Uh, it's written in C, and uh, there's a Python uh, wrapper that's pretty straightforward. You can like easy install or pip, whatever people are doing. Uh, there's a lot of documentation on their wiki, and uh, it's pretty pretty great other than that GPL part. But if you want to use this for your company, there's a, you can give them some money and they'll be like, oh, that's not gpl anymore. Uh, so now, uh, here's another one. This is uh, lib disassemble. It's written in Python. Uh, it, it hasn't been updated in a long time. It doesn't have tests. There's there's no documentation. There's like a readme, and it's like run this command. Um, but it's there in case you you want to try some. Uh, this is uh, the NASM disassembler. It's uh, BSD licensed now, and uh, it's just a command line tool. Like anybody's like who's done a bunch of like ROP gadget finding is. Uh, probably call this in a loop and like grab for stuff. Um, that's an example for how to call it. Uh, it doesn't have, a, like there's not like an a, a direct API, it's not meant to use that, it's meant to be a tool. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Some Somebody really doesn't like that, I guess. Uh, next up is uh, <laughs> UDIS64. Uh, uh, it's got actually got a lot of good documentation and has tests. They're mostly commented out, but I think if you uncomment them, you can kind of make sure it works. Uh, then there's Zed. Uh, this is like part of like Intel's big thing. It's not open. It's the only thing here. It's not open source, but you can like link against it and compile it on Windows and some other and like Linux now. Uh, I have a lot of friends who swear by it, but I've never used it, and their like small example page is really, really long. So uh, this last category is the uh, multi-architecture disassemblers, which try to do a lot of things. And this is where there's been a lot of development recently, uh, because like there's so many different kinds of devices out there. Uh, just a few months ago, there's this new disassembler called called Capstone. Um, and it does a lot of stuff. I saw this and I'm like, wow, this list looks familiar. And it's because it's actually just wrapping the LLVM disassembler. But uh, it's really cool. It's like incredibly active. Um, also, when I copied the text from their website, it crashed, power when I, it crashed PowerPoint when I pasted it in. I don't know. Maybe I should ask the CoSync guys about that. Uh, so what's good about Capstone? Uh, it's very actively developed, like they're committing to it every day. They just reduced the size of their library by two, like to, they divided it by two. And it still does the same stuff. Uh, it's got documentation, there's like clear documentation, but this is how you call it in every language. There's even the Go bindings. I'm, I'm sure we'll get this into Node.js and be really cool though. Uh, we've got uh, tests for it and uh, the only kind of, there's no bad things about it. 
uh, as far as I could tell, but there's like an okay thing. It's that their code isn't actually directly calling LLVM. They've like CFI their, the LLVM C++. So it'll be a little behind. Um, kind of at the opposite end of the spectrum, there's the NV framework that's in uh, Vivisect and VDB. Um, it does three architectures, x86, AMD64, ARM, and Z80 for like hacking uh, calculators and Game Boys, I guess. Um, but their, their website's not up right now. It's been up in the past, but it just gives you the uh, it works uh, default Apache page. So you might, you might not want to use that one. Uh, then the next one is actually the LLVM disassembler, LLVM MC. And uh, it does a whole bunch of architectures. And anything that LLVM targets, they have a disassembler for. And uh, what's really cool is recently they, they added the support for Intel syntax, which made my day because uh, I can't read AT&T syntax, it's all backwards. Um, it's kind of clunky to use though, it's a command line tool directly. Uh, and uh, you kind of have to give it its input in a weird format. You don't give it binary data, you have to give it like hexified values. Like I think it's calling like stir to, stir to UL on, uh, on the numbers and like tokenizing it or something. Uh, but it does work and it prints out like bytes. Um, the uh, last one that I want to talk about is Radar. Uh, this is a pretty cool project. It does a whole bunch of debugging. It's kind of kind of custom. They have bindings for for uh, Ruby. It's pretty good. They have a very active support community. They'll go and wrap other people's disassemblers so you can actually uh, use it. Uh, and. Uh, the uh, last thing I want to do before I explain why this presentation actually got started is uh, like, so I listed all these things. What's the useful thing out of it? It's like, well, you should probably try these other tools because somebody else has already done the hard work. A, a lot of my friends are like, oh, this dissimilar might not do the exact thing I want, but they might not know what their future uses are. And it's kind of like, doing something that's easy and kind of finite, for like I'm gonna disassemble all these bytes instead of working on the real project. So of these, I'd, I'd recommend uh, using a combination of these three tools, Capstone, Dystorm, and B-Engine. Um, so the other part, uh, if I can try to get this demo thing to work, because I got a couple minutes. Uh, if not, I'll just like, go to a website. Is this online? No? Oh well. Uh, well, if you go to gist.github.com slash computerality, uh, there's a file called uh, testfile.py, and it turns out the LLDB debugger, the LLVM debugger, uh, has a Python binding. It's really cool. And they have a disassembler wrapper, so in about 15 minutes, I wrapped it, and you can like disassemble raw bytes, and it's up there. Um, and it's like 10 lines of code. So you never know where you're gonna find a disassembler that's accessible to you. And that's it. Thank you. All right, so the, I guess hopefully we're gonna announce the winners uh, tomorrow at the closing ceremonies. Got some awesome prizes going. The only thing that I ask here is that we uh, leave, whenever we leave, we're supposed to leave from these back doors and go in. So we're not supposed to go out these side doors. So with that, um, that's it for Smoocon Fire Talks this year and thanks for attending. <laughs>